Hi guys, well welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Sun's out today, first time in a week. Makes a big change. Lovely and warm inside the greenhouse, outside bitterly cold. Um, I'm surprised we didn't have any frost this morning. We had a bit of frost on the car but apart from that it wasn't too bad. Um, We've managed to get a few a few jobs done um, this week. Uh, one of them was uh, clearing all the sedum and the still be off the, the front part of the plot, which I've got a little cl couple of little clips here to show you me doing now. So let's uh, go get straight into it and show you what we've been well, doing. Well, guys, what I'm doing is taking uh, all the tops off the of sedum, get really close to the ground. There's a few weeds in amongst all these. But when I clear them all back, you see the new growth ready for coming through for next year. Yeah, this is some weed here. Get rid of the weed. I don't know if you can see, just here, this is the new growth. These should just, easy to just snip out. I'm going to do this with them all. Few little weeds there, just pull them out. There we go, that's that one sided up. But uh, all these here, all these little shoots for the next year's sedum. Right, anyway, I've got to go down the line, I've got a lot to do. I'll show you when I've done them all. Right, so this is me a still, but this just breaks off this. All this just just snaps off. Just tidy this up. That will sit this here, it's just you know, might throw a little bit of compost on that eventually, but it doesn't need it. I'm just tidying the bed up, right? Just going to cut this seed and back now.
taking this off will let the light onto all the new growth. In about three months you'll start to see this coming back. Trimmed it all. Jobs are good. And guarantee you, this are all come back around about. February, March next year, keep an eye on it and you'll see it coming back, the Astilbe, that will come back, don't matter what you do to the Astilbe, that will come back, as I said, just taking what I'm pulling at here, some of them yellow flag harvests that have decided to grow in the path, right, anyway, jobs are good, so I'm going to continue doing the rest you of them. See. All along here, we took the sedum up now, and they still be on either corner. When I say take it, we took the tops off them. Um, there's some runners up there, we're going to be taking the runners. Uh, we're going to collect a load of runners. I'll show you me getting a few of these in the next video, maybe if I've got the time. But um, yeah, them strawberries up there look absolutely awesome. Uh, we will, once the leaves are off here, we're going to tidy these up. These are gooseberries, currants, a couple of currants there, more gooseberries over there. These are all uh, currants and raspberries, a few more currants there. Uh, this bed's all tidied up, as you see. Birds have been flicking the bloody pellets, uh, the, the compost out of here. Eventually, when I get me... Um, My strawberries in here, they won't be able to do that. In fact, I was thinking of just covering it um, just to stop stop the birds from flicking all the bloody um, the clay pallets out of here. But anyway, that's what we've been doing this morning, clearing the sedum away. It's all gone now. Uh, what you see there's a couple of pop poppies. Them, them green things there are poppies. And you've got um, a loop in there. There's another loop in over there. But... Um, all the tops are now are off. It looks a bit better. Path's a bit tidier. Right, let's move on. So we removed all that, and there is new growth there coming through on from the sedum. They'll still be able to sit dormant until around about March, April, and then it'll come good again. Beautiful plant. You can get it in three different colours, like a pink, a red, and a white. Um, I've, the one I've got is the the pinkish, the pink one. I think it's a pink. No, it might. It's red the one I've got um, is beautiful though and um, we will be picking some of the runners out of that bed as well these the strawberry bed which <laughs> strawberries look absolutely amazing for this time of year anyway uh, we're going to take a few runners and put them into the back greenhouse speaking of greenhouses um, we've uh, been working on the the front greenhouse as well um, taking all the, the last of the chilies out of the and the peppers out of the front greenhouse I've got a couple of little clips here to show you me doing a bit of that. Um, it's very tight inside the greenhouse, so we couldn't really um, get the camera in there to show you more in detail what we were doing. But uh, a couple of highlights, and uh, we'll get to see the the chilies, what was left, what we the, the last of the chilies, and uh, more important, you get to see the the greenhouse tidied up, and ready to go. For you next can see year. it's really tight in here. And I'm going to be taking all my chilies out now. I'm pulling them off these plants. I have got some gloves somewhere. I'll be chopping them all up and getting rid of them. Taking all the canes out and tidying this up. Put the gloves on so I don't get chilies all over me. These are the chilies in question. And uh, some of them are, are ready, some ain't. But I hope we can sort them out at home. But, uh, these are these are chilies. Everywhere we look, these chilies. 
You can't come in here, Buttercup. Seriously, there's no room for you. They'll go and play. <laughs> Buttercup just at the door here. Yeah, so, like I say, we just, just pulling them all off now. It's a lot of messing about. I've got a, 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 a potato bucket here, me, one of my 30 litre buckets, so I'm just taking them out one at a time. I might get a bit of room in here once I've done most of them. Be careful I don't um, damage me my young um, grapevines. This should be okay, they're out of the way. Yeah, you know, like I say, it's just some of them are still green, unfortunately. Not my favourite process doing this. Uh, bloody leaves everywhere. Like I say, just above the um, the chilies is a, a big grapevine up there. And it's uh, scattering leaves everywhere. Like I say, now the chilies, beautiful, aren't they? What we'll do is we'll come back once we've collected them all and uh, we'll, we'll have a little show you what we ended up with. But uh, different chilies there. Oh, these are peppers, these. <laughs> right. Anyway, I've just got to. Let's well, say. Check this nun on. Book it at the side of it. Shake the roots out, get all the soil off the, the roots. Straight into the compost, uh, into the bucket here. Uh, like I say, we're getting closer um, to be able to bring the camera in. At the moment, I've got them playing with the weather. It's uh, raining at the moment. Oh, it's starting to spit. <sighs> all these, uh, what we was holding them up with. Let's take these out as well. Like I said, there's not much room to swing a cat round in here, and trust me, um, I'm not going to try it with Buttercup. But uh, anyway. I'm just going to continue this laborious task of taking all the tops off. So I won't bore you any longer, we'll come straight back when we've finished. So this is the front greenhouse, all the chilies are out now, the bed's all tidied up. We cleared all the, the leaves what was stuck to the glass. We'll come in there with the jet wash and we'll, we'll clean all this. I've uh, done this side, um, tidied it up. We've still got to collect the leaves off the grapevine, uh, that's, that's neither near nor there. Um, again there's another grapevine on this side so we'll, we'll come back to this side. This will give us something to do through the winter months and what have you. A uh, load of compost there and uh, probably I think there's about three or four bags there as well. <laughs> we've got enough compost, I think we've got about 30 bags of that now. Got enough wi um, watering cans, how many have we got there? Four, six, seven, eight. What do you have? Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, sorry, nine, there's another one there. Yeah, we do. We do have a lot of uh, watering cans. We fill them full of water and keep them in the greenhouses um, in spring. That's why I've got so many. I've probably got more. Um, these bigger ones go into the the main greenhouse, and the smaller ones stay in here. But uh, yeah, cleared it all. There's one, two, three. There's there's four little grapevines there. Well, they've gone dormant now. 
but next year they'll start to throw some leaves out and we'll dig them out, put them into pots and give them to friends on the allotments, that's what we normally do. This is the, the, the main grapevine, I need to come in here and uh, I've got to cut these some of this stuff out. Um, so it all needs tidying up, this is another job to do, but I, I can do this, like I say, in the middle of um, in, in winter. Give me, give me something to do, because we should have everything done by then. But uh, yeah, the main thing is clearing this for next year. I'll add a load of uh, blood fish and bone, grow more and all sorts of stuff in the way. Uh, chicken manure. Uh, and probably end up digging this stuff out and putting it onto beds and putting some new stuff in. That's what we normally do. Well, that's that for there, where the grapevine is. Anyway, there it is, all cleared. Thank God. That's well, as you can see, we've way. got some cayenne peppers there, jalapenos, uh, there's a few bell peppers. Um, this is what was left out of the harvest. Um, unfortunately, uh, the year's come to an end now, and uh, sadly, this is the last of the, the chilies and peppers. We've had a load of chilies and peppers out of that front greenhouse sort of, this year, but these are the last of them. So we've just lifted them out now, and uh, hopefully, um, we'll, we'll save, maybe save one or two of them for, for seeds for next year. But um, yeah, they're all going to end up in the cooking. We're having some hot burgers and kebabs and stuff like that with this lot. Anyway, that's the last of it until next year. So them chilies, uh, they all ended up at home um, in the dehydrator. So the, most of them are going to be turned into curry powder or chilli powder even. It's curry powder, chilli powder. And um, we used a few of them um, to make uh, some spicy burgers the other day. There was great chips and peas, nothing like it. Um, but yeah, that's the last of the chilies. Um, I was asked to do a, a bit of a video for the um, the community chickens uh, to open to get a few more plot holders to help out in the the community pen. So I've been work putting a little video together just to show people what they've got, what what's entailed, and what they're being asked of them. So I thought, what the hell, might as well show you the, the video which I've just made for the uh, the community group. So uh, here it comes. Hi guys, guys. I've, I've been asked to do a, a video um, looking for volunteers to help out with the community chickens. Now it's straightforward, it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes of your time. Um, if, if you want to spend a bit more time with them, you, you know, you, you can. Uh, they're very friendly chickens. Um, all we're asking for is someone to come in or... or might be one or two of you might be interested in helping out we're after more people to help out really the more the better and basically all you're doing is making sure they've got food and water in there and uh, collecting the eggs taking them to the community room and putting them in the community room it's straightforward I'll show you how to do that first things first we'll go up to the chicken community chickens and um, we'll show you where the food is and everything and where to where to look for the eggs as well well guys, uh, we're just coming up to the, the chicken's uh, pen. See this tap here? This is where you fill the water butts for the chickens. And if you look, this is as far as you have to walk to collect the water. So obviously, combinations there. You'll be told the combination. You come in. Chickens are very friendly, very noisy as well. Make sure the door's always shut or you'll be chasing chickens round all day. So we're coming in here. Now I've already topped the food up and collected the eggs, but this is where the food is. It's kept in here. There's a scoop in there. These things lift up and they've got hooks here and you just lift them off and then you top them up. Again, these water feeders, they, they got hooks on them. They lift off. You tip them upside down, you see this here, this it twists off, you fill the water, obviously these are upside down, you turn them the upside down, fill them up, you put the lid back on, then you flip them back this way up, that's it, that's how to do the water, it's dead straightforward. Um, this is the roost, this is where the, 
the sleep of the night. Them nest boxes there, um, they do lay in there and they tend to lay in the corners. So you check around the corners in here. They've not laid any in here today, but they, they, they do lay. So in there, in corners like this, they lay. So you've got to just check around all the corners. The other area that they like, this this is the main area where they lay. It's inside here, this, this nest box here. And as you can see, there's several chickens in there now laying. So we'll put the lid back down. And uh, like I said, we've already collected four eggs. Uh, you're going to see them. We're going to take you over to the community room now and show you how to do it. But this is where they like to lay. So if you check in here, um, you guaranteed you find the eggs more, more, more than likely in here or inside this uh, box here. They do lay in here as well in these boxes. So just quickly look around. Um, some bed in there. There's some more bed in there as well. But these are the chickens. And like I say, they're very friendly. So all you've got to do basically is make sure they don't run out of water and they don't run out of food. And you collect the eggs from there. Right, I'll take it over to the community room now and just quickly show you um, how to fill the form in, which is honestly, it's, it's dead simple, as you will see. So we've just come into the community room now and uh, we've put the eggs which the chickens have laid. They've laid four, so there's four there. You come over to this book, you write the date, it's the 15th today, 15th 11 21. He laid four eggs, and the person who, who collected the eggs, which was me, Mark, that's all you've got to do. And like I say, these sheets to continue. You've got to put the date, how many they laid, and who collected the eggs. That's it. This bit here is for people who want to buy eggs. So again, you put the date, how many eggs you bought, the plot number, how much you're leaving, and uh, signing it. Um, so, you know, so they know who's took the eggs. But, uh, yeah, all you've really got to do um, is put the date, how many eggs they've laid. Uh, they will lay more eggs, so you come back, you can put a line and add another, say they lay another three and put three at the side of it. So, in total, they laid seven eggs. That's if you, you come back later on. Chickens lay between eight and 12 but some of them are a bit lazy and they lay a little bit later so you know it's always wise to come and collect uh, check again you don't have to you can wait until the next day but yeah so that's it all you got to do date how many eggs are laid and who collected the eggs okay so as you saw there all it is is date how many eggs are laid you put your name who's collected the eggs and that's all you got to do and you can walk away and feel like you've, you've helped out with the chickens. Uh, like I say, the chickens are not to be, you know, they're, they're not scary. They're really, really playful. Um, and um, if, you, if you do volunteer, you will be helping, uh, really helping us out. Because at the moment, we've only got a couple of uh, plot holders. Um, and they can't get down here enough. So, like I say, if you're interested... Speak to me or any of the committee members and put your name down. Um, maybe if you can help out just once a week, it'd be great. Anyway, we wait with bated breath. So thanks for taking the time to watch the video. And um, do feel free to leave a comment below. So hopefully we'll get a few volunteers. Um, we did have nine chickens. Uh, we've lost one. It turns out one of them. It's managed to get out and um, someone found it on, on Medigate. Anyway, it's in a, in a bird sanctuary at the moment. So um, I don't know what's going to happen, whether we're going to get it back or not. But um, yeah, it managed to get out. So we're down to eight chickens. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is um, rebuilding, put a brand new roof on that chicken pen. Uh, we're going to be taking them chickens and putting them into, um, into another pen further up the allotments. Now we've got the door fixed on that. That's where they're going to be put. And then we're going to um, redo the roof, a uh, brand new roof on it. We've got all the materials to do it. So that's another job what we're going to be working on. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's all, all, 
starting to, to take shape on the allotments at the moment with um, all the, the, the grants and what have you. Um, we're getting them. Um, oh, we just got all the um, all the tugs or trugs for the um, for a plot, um, which we're going to be turning into four little min micro pots plots for the the disabled and what have you. And uh, we've got all the solar for the the shop and um, the community room microwaves and everything to go in there we've got all that um, we just need to to fix it up sorry about the uh, the strimmer that's ripped with his strimmer going at it there buttercups over with um, with Wendy over there at the moment keeping out the way uh, she's a little darling that one um, every morning I come down I've got her and, um, and uh, Maggie waiting for me to feed them in the greenhouse Maggie's the magpie by the way yes and she waits in the greenhouse with buttercup um, patiently for me to come and feed them and you're probably going yeah yeah well I don't say these things unless I've got um, back up so here's, this is what we come down to every morning meet Maggie and buttercup waiting patiently for the breakfast do you want to see something funny? There's Buttercup and there's Maggie. <laughs> What's she like? What are you doing here with her, you little traitor? Hey, is she keeping you company? Honest to God, guys. Hey. Waiting for me to feed them, a pair of them. Now, if I didn't show you this and I didn't show you her, you would never believe it. But, uh, what you make of that? Well, I'm just going to go and collect the eggs from the chickens. I'll be back in a minute and feed them both. Just Unbelievable. The too. The bloody noise there. Yeah, that's Maggie. That's Buttercup. And they get on really well together. And um, we've got Tiggy Winkle who comes in and keeps Buttercup. Um, company in the evenings as well uh, that's the head jog and um, yeah it's, it's, it's amazing to see them both together um, you, you know normally you wouldn't see that you would probably see buttercup eating eating Maggie but then again I put that much food out they're not really hungry for um, eating each other they, they prefer to eat the food and as long as the food's there buttercup's gonna uh, uh, gonna be friends for a long time I would imagine I know saying that They've both been on my plot for over eight, well, Maggie's been on it at least 18 months now, but a couple a bit longer, so they do get on well with each other. Um, I have been clearing some of the leaves from underneath the trees and the orchard, and I can tell you, it's a bit of a nightmare. I've got a couple of clips here, I'm not going to show you me doing it and raking it and all that, but you, see, you get the idea, and you see Buttercup up to mischief in the video as well, but this is what we've been doing. Well, as you can see, we've got uh, a couple of buckets here and we're collecting all these leaves from underneath the orchard. I've done this side, almost. I've got the other side to do. Yeah. Here she comes. Unbelievable. Yeah, we're just collect gathering these up. We'll put them into the, in the bags down there. And uh, we're done. All the snowdrops can come through here then. Um, hey up, here she goes. Climbing up the bloody tree. You're going to stay up there because I'm not lifting you down. Look at her. What's she like? <laughs> hey. Getting up to mischief. What is it with cats? Why do they want to climb dead eye? Hey. No idea. Hopefully she's out the way while I do this. Unless she's going to jump off into the uh, the leaves down here. Well, if she falls, she's going to land in the leaves down there anyway. Way up. What the hell is she doing? I don't think she knows what she's doing herself. What? I'm sorry, I'm not lifting you down. You stay there. Right, anyway, I'm going to get rid of these. She can stay where she is. Unbelievable. You daft bugger, you nearly fell. Oh, get 
What? Like if she's trying to come to me. I bet hang on, I put the, the camera the phone down and pick her out the bloody tree. Unbelievable. There she is. None the worse. I can get on with this now. If she lets me. So we cleared this side, I've got the other side to do. <sighs> what? You're being pinned the back side. <laughs> yeah, well, the leaves we took out of here is amazing, how many. But then again, there's a few trees. We're still gonna be taking leaves out of here for the next two weeks at least. But at least we got the majority of off, off the, um, the snowdrops and what have you. Because underneath there's all the snowdrops. Anyway, go and do the other side now. What do you mean, no? <laughs> like I say, she's uh, always wanting to, to help me. Right, anyway, over there, <coughs> that's where we're going now. What possible mischief can she get into now? She's on top. On top of the bird feeders. Unbelievable. Yeah, just clearing underneath these trees here, getting all these leaves. And uh, I can see all the planters are all coming to life. Now you can see all the, the bulbs coming up in the planters. It won't be long before all these and these borders will be coming up as well. But uh, yeah, I'm just, just clearing these, these leaves and tidying up here. And uh, then all the spring bulbs be able to come through. I don't like them coming through this leaf stuff. If I was to leave it and let it rot down, you'd be weeds and everything underneath all the trees there. So we're trying to get it out as much as we can. Anyway, it's all going in compost bin and rotting down. But there's Buttercup keeping out the way for now. So as you can see, we've got it all clear. Um, what will happen, we'll still get leaves falling, but I collect them, every, I, I've decided to, to collect them every three or four days. And the reason why I need to, to take the leaves up is because of all the um, snowdrops underneath the orchard um, trees. Um, they will be coming up shortly. So I don't want to leave the leaves there. As I think I mentioned in the video, if you leave the leaves there, they rot down and the next minute you've got weeds growing underneath the trees and I don't want that so it was wise and I was it's wise of me to take the leaves up and we put them in a compost bin and rot them down anyway but anyway um, that's what we've been doing I've um, like I said I've not had much much time on the allotments so it's been raining most of the time I've been busy on eBay buying um, silly coins for myself uh, bought some beautiful coins there pandas um, Chinese pandas um, that are one troy ounce of silver um, between 30 and 60, 70 quid um, each and uh, I, I saw one or two of them, I quite liked them so I decided to start buying a few of them anyway I've, I've amassed a few over the last couple of weeks and um, there's a few of my friends who like watching, seeing these coins that I put up so I always leave it until the end so if you don't want to watch, the, have a look at the coins you can always um, leave it there and I'll see you all in the next one but if you are interested um, let's show you these coins what I've been collecting over the last couple of weeks hi guys so these are the um, the coins that I've been buying um, a couple of weeks and the pandas they're all different different pictures on each of them these are all silver one tri ounce of silver so, so far I've got nine of them. These are all Batanias. These are all date runs. These. Again. These are some more. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, crowns here. George III and II. And uh, that's the uh, Victoria crowns. Um, like I say, they're in these. Uh... Oh. In these uh, coin cases, but these are the new ones what I've been buying, and uh, yeah, I've got a bit to go yet uh, before we get them all. But um, each one of them costs you about 30 35 quid. 
um, and that's as cheap as they go and they go up to 60 70 quid and some of them are even more expensive but i thought i'd share these ones these are what have been collecting and no that one's the one what we just the recent one but hey ho there we go Now me, I'm a completist, so I'm going to end up collecting them all, um, every single one of them. I will find them and I will buy them. And um, the good thing about silver, um, it, it's it's better than it's be better than paper money anyway. Um, silver is fluctuating about twenty five, twenty six dollars. Well, it's probably twenty five dollars at the moment. And as inflation goes up, so will the price of silver. So it's a, it's a good investment and it's a, an easy way to make a bob or two if you want to make money out of it. I don't, I just like to collect it. Um, I love silver and uh, like I say, I've got quite a lot of it. Uh, anyway, there was the coins what we've just been buying. Like I say most of the coin fairs are all closed. There's one coming up in a week or two. So... We wait with bated breath to see what I, I, I can find at that fair. The trouble is you can't really take a camera in there and do any recording because they're very um, suspicious when you go in with cameras. So, you know, I can only really show you afterwards. So I might maybe take a couple of pictures to show you where it was, the venue. I think the next venue is in Bolton. Um, coin for, uh, it's, a, it's an antiques fair, actually. So I should be at that one. Anyway... Um, like I saw this morning, the geese um, flying south for the winter. Let me show you. Well, I don't know if you can see up there. Load of geese heading south for the winter. See this every year. There's a fair few there. I don't know if the camera's picking them up. Lovely, lovely sights to see. Anyway, well, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to fly north, and I'm going to go and try and get this video up for later on tonight. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you back here for some more next week. Bye for now. Buttercup, by the way, she's over with Tracer. And uh, she sat with her in the greenhouse over there, little traitor. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up here and sneak off. So I'll see you later guys, stay safe, bye for now.